These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There is a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos dot htm or you can just use the link in the info box. By the way, I also offer tutoring via Skype and you can find more information about that Skype tutoring service at my website. Thanks. Let's see if we can come up with a, what do you call these, uh, electrocyclic? Let's see if we can come up with a mechanism for an electrocyclic reaction here. What would be the mechanism for an electrocyclic reaction? Now, I think you guys had a little trouble drawing the technically correct arrows here. You want to make sure you know exactly where the heads and the tails are supposed to be. So here we have this arrow. Here we're forming a sigma bond. So the tail should be on the pi bond, and the head should be on the atom. Now, this is the arrow I think you might have given me some trouble. I think you might have drawn it like this. But this would be too big of a leap. Instead, the way we should draw this arrow is like this. We're simply taking this pi bond and moving it over here. And I think that also might have given you a little trouble when you're drawing the product. And then the same deal for this arrow. So both the heads and the tails here should be pointing to the middles of the bonds. Whereas here, the head should be pointing directly at the bond because we're forming a sigma bond. I did that. Okay. Yeah, actually, I think you still get the right product anyway. I think you still get the right product, but it's easier to get the right product if we draw the arrows correctly. So I'll use the redraw and modify technique. I know I'm going to eliminate this pi bond and make a sigma bond. It might help if I actually redraw. Eliminate the pi bond and make a sigma bond. And here this means to eliminate this pi bond and form a pi bond over here. And this arrow means to eliminate this pi bond and form a pi bond over here. So this is a case where redrawing and then modifying might help you to get the right picture, but it helps to put the arrows in the exact right places. And this is what we call an electrocyclic reaction. It's a kind of a reasonable name. We're moving pi electrons around in a cycle. We're moving pi electrons around in a cycle. Now, these reactions tend to be reversible in the sense that they can go either way. So we should also try to draw the mechanism that would take us back to here. So now let's put electron pushing arrows in this picture to show how we can get back to that picture. Now, this is a little bit different because in this picture we were only moving pi bonds. Every, all the tails were on pi bonds, but here we have to start with this sigma bond. We have to start by breaking the sigma bond. This actually is, um, I don't know if you've ever seen a reaction like this where we just break a carbon-carbon sigma bond. So we have to overcome our natural disinclination to do that and actually break this carbon-carbon sigma bond over here. Now in order to avoid breaking the octet rule, we have to move this pi bond out of the way. And then to avoid breaking the octet rule over here, we have to move this pi bond out of the way. By the way, something I should mention is notice that you know you're doing this right 
if the head of one, uh, if the head of each arrow is pointing to an atom that's also losing electrons. Notice that this head is pointing towards this atom, basically, which is also losing these electrons. I should have mentioned that for the Diels-Alder as well. Both, of, both the Diels-Alder and electrocyclic, these are all, all what are called, um, I think, paracyclic reactions. Paracyclic. Yeah, they're all called paracyclic because the, the arrows should be going in a circle. So the, 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 the last arrow should end up pointing to where the first arrow was coming from. Otherwise, you've made a mistake. You should always be able to form a complete circle of arrows here. That's so what we're doing. this kind of electrocyclic and this plus deals alder are both paracyclic? That's right. This is electrocyclic. There's also deals alder. And both of those are called paracyclic. I, I kind of doubt that your instructor would test you on the difference between paracyclic and electrocyclic. But anyway, um, deals alder and this, this is electrocyclic. Deals alder and electrocyclic are both called paracyclic. There's another type of paracyclic reaction called sigmatropic, I think, but you guys aren't covering that, so I shouldn't have mentioned it. All right, so uh, let's see. And I don't need to draw, bother drawing the product from this because it's this. Something else I should have mentioned for Diels Alder is that you can draw the arrows either clockwise or counterclockwise. It doesn't matter whether you draw them clockwise or counterclockwise, you'll get the same result either way. So your arrows might look different from the book if you drew them in the opposite direction, but that doesn't matter. And do you need heat for this? Um, or All of these reactions either require heat or light. And that's where we get into the conjugate. That's right. So in a moment, we'll be, we'll be talking about that. In this particular case, it turns out that the ring closing requires heat, and the ring opening requires light. So we'll talk about that more in just a minute. But before we do that, let's draw the mechanism for an a electrocyclic reaction here. We need to draw the mechanism for an electrocyclic reaction. Notice that electric cyclic reactions are, are all either ring opening or ring closing. Well, here, this was a ring opening. Notice that when you do a ring opening, you have to break a sigma bond. The ring opening always involves breaking a sigma bond. We mentioned how you might not feel comfortable doing that because we haven't broken carbon-carbon sigma bonds much in the past. But to do a ring opening, obviously, you can't open the ring without breaking the sigma bond. So here's the arrows moving in a cycle. And then we can use the redraw and modify technique. I'm going to break this sigma bond and turn it into a pi bond. And then I'm going to break this pi bond and put it up here. You both work that out. That's good. And let's draw the mechanism for the reverse reaction. What would the mechanism for the reverse reaction look like? Let's see if you already got it. That's good. This arrow, the tail should be in the middle and the head should be in the middle because we're breaking and forming the pi bond. But this arrow, the, head, the tail should be in the middle, and the head should be on the atom, because we're forming a sigma bond. And I don't need to, need to bother drawing the product, because it's this. By the way, this is what? 1,3-butadiene, which plays a big role in this chapter. Now, it turns out that in this case, the ring opening is what's called thermal. And the ring closing is what's called photochemical. Remember, this is the symbol for light, basically, for photons. Remember, this is really the symbol nu. It looks like a V, but it's not a V. It's the Greek symbol nu. It stands for frequency. But anyway, overall, this stands for light. This is light, and this is heat. Well, when we use heat, that's called a thermal reaction. And when we use light, that's called photochemical. Yeah. So in this case, the ring closing is thermal, and the ring opening is photochemical. But in this case, the ring opening is thermal, 
and the ring closing is photochemical, so it's different in the two different cases. Now we have to see, this is kind of like with the deals alder. Now that we've got the basic pattern, we have to see what happens with substituents. Well, let me put the table on the board. These are, I think, called the Woodward, Woodward Hoffman rules. Did your instructor mention those? Yeah, but yeah. he doesn't like us memorizing that table because he says it can be misleading. Oh. So he says, I don't know, we should focus on how the charge, matching the charges of the electron or something like that. Something weird. Does he use molecular orbitals? Maybe it might help if I can take a look at your notes for that to see how I did it. Well, let's start by using the Woodward-Hoffman, and then, if necessary, we can go into more of the details. 